Phoenix Plus. Uh, the Phoenix Plus is designed for both indoor installations uh, and outdoor installations. It's truly unique. Uh, the unit comes with a 119 gallon storage tank. Um, we have uh, four firing ranges. Uh, we have a 399,000 BTU unit. Uh, we have a, 300, a 320,000 BTU unit, a 260,000 BTU unit, and then our smallest unit is going to be 199,000. Uh, the, the 399, the 320, and the 260 are 10 to 1 turned down, and the 199, because it is a single combustion system, is a 5 to 1 turned down. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you through the appliance, uh, show you its features, show you how it's set up, One of the true uh, unique features of our Phoenix Plus uh, water heater is that we have two combustion systems. We have a second stage which is on the top here, this combustion system. Um, this is on our 399. Each one is approximately around 199,000 BTUs. You've got your fan, your gas valve, your flex line, and then you can see we tee in here where we have the gas come into one line and then it branches off and this is the top combustion system and then as you see go down you can see that we have a uh, bottom combustion system so the nice thing about this is that if one combustion system has an issue the other one will take over the load and there's a lot of ways you can set this up to increase its overall efficiency and both combustion systems utilize our standard premix burner with a spark ignition system and a flame probe, uh, which is our stand, basically standard parts that we commonly use on our standard Phoenix platform. Um, so all these parts are interchangeable with our existing product line. There's nothing unique about this. And each one is fed independently, um, each one is operated independently, and that provides that additional redundancy I was talking about. So if anything ever does happen, you can repair it, shut one down, and the other one will take over. So these burners actually stage as you start to draw water through, and then they'll watch the rate of change. We have sensors in the tank, and they watch the rate of change, and then they'll start to increase their firing rate, trying to maintain a set point on each control uh, that is uh, programmed on the unit uh, prior to installation. Our condensate, if you pan down here, you'll see that our condensate system is also connected. We have our top condensate uh, trap. We have our vent. If you go down here, you'll see that we also have our bottom condensate. One thing we also do on the bottom is we have a secondary trap. So that is for any reason, let's say someone runs one of the combustion systems longer than the other, that secondary trap will always be full and eliminate any possibility of condensate due to blockage uh, pressurizing and that blowing out where the uh, block vent switch would not pick up the pressure in the vent system. Uh, I recommend if you go into areas where you get below freezing temperature that you put some type of heat tape. You don't run long distances and you create a discharge um, that will be on a solid surface so the, the, uh, the liquid can then flow away, especially on outdoor installations. On indoor, there's no problem as far as the condensate line because indoor will have conditioned space. But outdoor, you have to be careful with uh, below, uh, when you start getting below freezing. It can create some problems, so you have to accommodate for that. But this is where the condensate line would be connected. On the venting, um, we have your inlet pipe here and you have your exhaust. The exhaust is manifolded together, um, so you have one common vent, which is four inch, it's pushed up down, it's pushed from three inch to four inch, and an exhaust four inch up here, uh, where you can, on an outdoor installation, you just let it exhaust straight up. Um, on an indoor installation, you're gonna connect up your PVC four inch pipe, and then you're going to run your pipe um, for whatever distance to the outdoors. On the inlet, the inlet's a little different. The inlet we have set up 
you can see we have a cap on the top and a cap on the bottom. Um, what you do is if you've got a indoor installation, you leave the cap on the bottom and what you do is you take the cap off of the top and you run your vent, your inlet connection from outdoors to our inlet connection on the PVC, which is four inch. If you're doing an outdoor installation, you leave the cap the way it is, you take the bottom cap off in the unit, and then uh, basically you take the cap off, take the hose off, and your air is gonna be drawn through both of these pipes, through both of these T's to these flex lines into the combustion system. There is check valves in each one of these, and the reason why we have check valves in the inlet is because we don't want to see if one of the combustion systems goes down, we have a check system, so if there is back pressure before the pressure switch picks it up, it doesn't allow combustion gases to be sucked through one system into another, and that's why we have that. Uh, in, its, in the door, we have a louver system, so when you're drawing the air from the cabinet, the louvers are designed to let airflow come in, flow near the control to keep it cool, especially in really warm conditions. And we've got both bot top louvers and bottom louvers that are designed to supply combustion air into the box. In our vent system, you notice that we have our, con our standard condensate trap. And then you can see on the discharge side, we come into a T here. If we pan down, you can see we have a 90. Okay, and that 90 is then connected to one vent system. So we have our exhaust here on the bottom uh, combustion system, and then we can pan up here. We go to a T. We increase our size from 3 inch to 4 inch, and then we go into our secondary combustion system. And then if we keep panning up, you'll see that we exhaust straight out. And then we have a flange here with a gasketed O ring seal. To, uh, to seal the cabinet up just so no rain would get inside the cabinet with outdoor installations. Again, the condensate's trapped in each individual combustion system, both the top and the bottom. We have our pressure, our block uh, 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 vent switch on both the top and the bottom, which goes off at a, an inch and a half water column. So if there's any blockage in the vent or one of the vent systems, the pressure builds up the block vent will shut the unit down safely. One other thing we have is we have uh, key locks here which lock the system. Um, they don't provide a key lock itself. You would have to buy that separately. But we do provide that as an option where you can actually have a lock on these slotted uh, uh, clamps where you can actually have a key lock, especially outdoors, or you have it in an area where somebody could potentially get at it if it's an outdoor installation and you want to lock it up. Um, we do provide that as an option for our customers. One other thing about the cabinet, the cabinet is designed, it's basically shipped on its own skid. You'll see that the unit is, the skid is very robust because I'm, I got a 119 gallon storage tank in here. So we built this very, very rugged. The cabinet is very, very rugged for a reason because you're going to be putting these, this outside and we want to make sure that this cabinet lasts for a very, very, very long time and we have no issues. Uh, so you're going to need to put this on some type of a concrete, solid surface. You can't put it on uh, uh, just regular, uh, a regular uh, non-structural surface. Follow the instructions in the manual. It'll tell you what type of surfaces we want because when you have 119 gallon and you're going to be filling it with water, uh, that's going to be almost a thousand pounds of weight you're going to have going on that surface. So it's got to be rugged, especially if you're doing it outdoors. So there's a number of uh, suggestions in the manual as to the surface and the way the surface, uh, the platform should be uh, designed to put mount the Phoenix Plus. Two control systems. Um, you'll see the unit will have a control and it has this Velcro, uh, Velcro on the back of the control. That's so you can take it out and you can hold it in your hand. You can program. It has three digits on here where it'll measure. It'll tell you the temperature. We have a flame on and a fault code. And then you could get fault codes depending on what a fault occurs in the field. And you have a number of different. You have a plus and a minus key, a programming key, and a reset key. 
and each combustion system comes with its own control pad so you can set them up. The factory default on these units will be set at 119 degrees, both the top and the bottom will be set at 119 degrees F with a 7 degree differential. That can be changed, so you could actually run the bottom at a colder temperature, you could run that at let's say 110 degrees with a 5 degree differential and you could run the top unit at a 20, uh, 120 degrees at a 10 degree differential so the unit will stage and it will actually increase the efficiency of the bottom combustion system. There's a number of different ways through the temperature, through the keypads and the displays you can increase the efficiencies by just changing temperatures or differential settings to increase the unit's overall efficiency. But again, the unit will be shipped at a uh, set point of 119 degrees with a 7 degree set point. And to simply put this back, you just stick it right to the Velcro, Velcro and it sticks right to the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, inside of the cabinet. And then in here, you can see our control. We have our spark lead. Uh, we have our, lo our low voltage circuit, our line voltage circuit. We're just providing power. We have our sensors located within the tank. We both, each combustion system has a top and a bottom sensor. It also has a high limit. If you pan up, you can see that we have these sensors. And you can see we have low, low water cutoffs. We actually have two of them on the very top of the unit. And we have two high limits. One that's located here and another one which is a little harder to see, which is located on the very top. So we have two high limits in the system. We have uh, both a, a, a top sensor and a bottom sensor, very similar to our, our uh, Phoenix system, so they operate the same. But again, we designed this so they, they operate independently, kind of like an electric tank, and they stage. Some of the things that you can do with this control system is you can program the top system at a little higher temperature than the bottom, which will actually increase the unit's overall efficiency, because the lower the operating temperature, the better. So the bottom could basically preheat the water before it gets to the top combustion system and then the top combustion system brings it to that your desired set point. You can also maintain the same set point between the bottom and the top on the control and you can use your differential to stage fire your combustion systems, um, which is another way you can uh, increase your overall efficiency of the operation of the uh, Phoenix Plus. Some of the connection points that you'll have to do we have a three-quarter inch uh, connection port for your gas feed coming in. It'll be labeled whether it's natural or OP set at the factory. We have our electrical connection uh, where you're going to bring in 110 volts uh, to the appliance uh, to provide power. And then on the bottom, if we pan down here, you have your condensate connection points. On the bottom of the unit, you'll have your cold feed, which is an inch and a half stainless steel connection. And then as we pan up here, you'll see that in the middle of the tank we have an auxiliary port. This auxiliary port, which is one inch, is used for a research connection for a building. And on the very top, we have our hot water outlet, which is an uh, inch and a half.